Yo, I applaud y'all, man. I, I'm really happy for y'all, sincerely. Because I guess, too, you know, like, like, sometimes you get to see something that's really organic blossom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you've been there, you recognize it. You know right. what I'm saying? I recognize what y'all going through right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I could see it from a distance and I'm like, yo, this is a pleasure to see. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all are just coming out of the ground slowly, seeing a little leaf here, foliage here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But soon, you know, you get leaves, you get fucking twigs and arms and, and then flowers. You know what I'm saying? And y'all are on y'all way. Y'all are well out the ground. For you know tree. Word up, you know? I'm just stuck, yeah, well in, out the ground. stuck in the weeds right now, bro. Yeah, I don't see nobody you know what, though? Out sometimes, though, this is my word. Sometimes, I think you, I, I, I seen you posted something and I, and I kind of knew what you was alluding to. Let the weeds be weeds. I can't stop them. Yeah, right, 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 right. Let the weeds be weeds. I, you know what I'm saying? Just be strong enough to, to, to grow beyond them. I just let them know that I know that's a weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I feel that's I respect as far that. as I go with it. I respect oh, that. No, Right, 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 right. You're a weed. I call that the blue light. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, motherfucker play themselves, and now they got the blue light on them forever. Every time they come around, they got the blue light on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you, oh, you're a blue light. All right, cool. So, See, mm -hmm. this is this is this is, <laughs> this is Queens logic. This is, this is, <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. So I can set it off. <laughs> Anytime it's heavy Brooklyn, I gotta hear about it. <laughs> Queens is in here. I just need that, bro. We, 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 you know what though? Yeah, no. we I forgive you. We forgive you. We forgive you. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. But, it's but, fine. The B, but the BQE is real though. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the BQE yeah, it was at one time it was all connected. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 The BQE is Queens Day to this day. We have from the Queens Day to this day. That's a fact. That's a it's not me you have to convince. Somehow in this shop, sometimes just it's Brooklyn. It's really Brooklyn you gotta convince. Queens Yo, is always cool. Mega is defensive, man. He's defensive about because of the MC shit. Because I get you it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yo, I'm saying. saying. <laughs> <laughs> and we ain't even like y'all should y'all should have more issue with the Bronx than us. We ain't do nothing to y'all. We just Queens been Queens just be chilling ever since you know say ever since KRS got on some bullshit with us. <laughs> we just been like, yeah, all right, all right, you all got right. it. You know what I'm saying? But we but, but, but we always been in the cut. Heavy. Queens get the money. That's all. Y'all can y'all can yeah. argue all right, so. We back, right? Uh, are we? Yeah. Are we? Are we up? <laughs> we up? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, my fault. We can dispute about this all day. Yeah, we we actually can. We, we, yo. <laughs> but you know what though? But 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 this is another thing that that's part of New York's problem on the low. Instead of us being a fist, we a bunch of fingers. Five yeah. to be. Yeah, no, that's a fact. There's you know a lot of saying? examples of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead Five of us being be a fist, we we a bunch of fingers, and and when we a fist, ain't nothing stronger. Mm -hmm. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When we a fist, when New York is a fist, ain't nothing stronger than New York. But New York is a bunch of fingers right now. Because everybody in competition with each other. Yeah. That's how we Real allow talk. so many other people to enter the market. Right, 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 right. I mean, you know what? That was destined to come, I, I think, because, because New the York, culture was gonna grow. The culture was growing and 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 I have to make myself part of the equation. We needed to eat a little humble pie. We really New York really made it look like if it ain't New York, it ain't shit. Mm -hmm. And and for a while, I was right there with him. You know what I'm saying? I ain't confront, but it took us growing up to be like, oh shit, like the world is bigger. The world doesn't revolve around us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was a hum it was a humbling lesson. It was a humbling and lesson. And the rush, the rush was so quick too. The rush when hip hop hit, man, it, That's it, because it went they were global waiting. so fast. Yeah, they yeah. were waiting. They, they were definitely. No, they were every, <clears throat> and anybody watching from the sidelines who knows they can play. Can't wait for the day to get called off the game. Word. That's the real. The second I get in That's the game, real. Yeah. I'm That's going real. for it. Wait, 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 wait. The world do revolve around us. <laughs> That's right, nigga. Okay. Okay. It just, it just right? happens. No, no, no. It just happens to turn and everything get its turn, but. but. You know, I, know what I know? The word. New the, York is still the, the verb. The verbiage I, I use. Yeah. The verbiage I use is this. Every city's the bomb. New York is the fuse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the verbiage I use. If, if we was but, living... But, 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 but we can't take away from every city. You no, know what I'm saying? And, and, that, and that was the problem. Mm -hmm. We was taking away... Like, nah, your city ain't shit. You know how you talk? Nah, nigga. You know, yeah, nah, you wait. You, you, nah, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But every city got what we got. But we are the initiators. We the, we the fuse. Without us, none of this shit pops. Mm -hmm. it's a but trust me, you go to any city USA, there's, there's us. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid growing up, the old old school taught me something that I always kept in mind. 
because I used to go down south and be down south a lot. That. And they said, you could go down south and you could knock out a hundred niggas down south. You could take over a hundred blocks down south. You could do whatever you want, wherever else you go, and it really means nothing. Mm. Do that in New York and see what it means. <laughs> no sauce. Hey, hey, set tripping in no here sauce. super early. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get the show started. Big out here talking tribalism. <laughs> that thought I no, 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 that's real. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. No, no, no. I make it here. All right, oh, hold on, hold on. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're already getting off we're on the wrong foot. We're fist. We're fist. My second time on the, in the captain chair. I'm already letting this thing go. All right. We back. Big Mac, Big Mac. That's what's up, baby. We back. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, my expert opinion, the number one show in the world, biggest growing, biggest, biggest moving, where the culture exists, no hands, no questions. It's us, and then it's everybody else. All right. My name is Mac, shout out to the man on my right, the King Champ. Let's What's go with good? What's good, everybody? Listen, man, like, subscribe, share, it don't cost you no paper, Let's use she's a, a mother and hater. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to- Teamwork. Uh, Math Hoffa, you know what I'm saying? Not he, feeling well, get well. Yeah, gets, he'll be back uh, next home. episode. Shout right. out to YKTV Magazine. Shout out, shout out to my boy um, at Dozito's Way 718, Fire Beats, new mixtape out, Big Spank Tape. Um, shout out to my uncle, DeMarco the Great, 76. Um, he has a new album out called Find I'll Do It Myself. Make sure y'all tap in, man. And I'm glad to be free. Another day. That, that, so, that, that, that one's never late. Let's get myself together here. Show a bigger man of God. Mm. Listen, now you don't want to turn it out. <laughs> <laughs> you was airing out two seconds ago. He was soaking that talk. Yeah, for real, for real. Are you saving it? Uh, Gat murder. I was, I was expecting yeah. splat. You should <laughs> never splat. Gat today, though. Pause. You should yeah. never today in opposition <laughs> call you. That's, that's, not a, that's not a pause. <laughs> I was expecting splat. That, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm trying to help. Gat murder in the building, you already know. Brooklyn's finest, Luke King. Big Brooklyn. Shass in the building. Chassity. Al. Salute King. Big right. Puff. Bro. And, Family right uh, there. We got, I know we, we toss the word around a lot. I know you've heard it a lot. I know you see it a lot. The word legend. It's all over the place on the internet. Everybody's legendary. But a lot of y'all favorite legends don't have resumes. They just got Wi-Fi. Big resumes. <laughs> these, these opinions are not valid. And they're not qualified. This dude has a resume. This dude has this dude has the history. This dude has the bars. This dude has the albums. And this dude has the respect of people who are better than your favorites. And he's from Queens. Ladies and gentlemen, Dreads of Black Shot. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. All right. Please get the money. Much love. Much love. Please get the money. Thanks for having me, fellas. Sincerely. No doubt. Salute, right salute, 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 salute to you, bro. Thank you right for up. being here, man. Um Man, it's a, this is, yo, I was just talking about it, but I, like, you know, just to say, I, to get to see how organically you brothers have been putting this together and blossoming, man, very happy and very proud, man, Cecilia. Yeah, shout, shout out to you, man. man. And, 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 and the culture, shout out to the, the culture, appreciate the culture appreciation, Cecilia. Everyone I know speaks so highly, Cecilia, like, and, and, and anyone else eventually will, you know what I'm saying, because y'all are doing it right, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and sometimes, sometimes a motherfucker don't see on day one what they see at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's, let's get to the end of the month and let, let the world, you know what I'm saying, judge it then. But y'all are doing it, man. And don't don't take your foot off the gas. Keep it going. Salute. 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 Okay. That. So normally, yeah. Mav sits here and the first question he asks is always something super flagrant. <laughs> super super crazy, super wild. Let's do it. I've been sitting necessary. here. <laughs> but necessary. Yeah. It's necessary. It's necessary. But it's normally for the heads. It's uh, normally for it the is. people who know. Right. And you have to know in order for the question to make sense. All right. That's why we. That's why you asked them for everybody to get an understanding. So I guess in that spirit, the question would be: Is "ho" still short for honey? "Ho" will always be short for honey. That's crazy. always. You know what I'm saying? So so short for how many? So. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so how about that? I've had so many people. I've had so many people when when I told them that you were coming to the show. I've had so many people who just were on this. Yo, dress, peace and love. Thought you were really on this. Like you know, 
I mean, I mean, I am. I mean, no, but I, I also remember the skits on that album. I mean, yeah, no. Nah. How you called all the chicks hoes, but it was short for honey. You played it off super smooth, and that it was a skit where a bunch of dudes ran up on you talking about, yo, how come you don't make no records about saving the whales and the hole in the, the, the ozone? <laughs> you pulled a gun on them. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, it was there. You know, there's things about me a lot of people wouldn't know. Most times, you might have seen me in public when I was a youngster. I, I probably had something close to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like, but that was the walk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a cat that didn't make a lot of the records that cats made because I was coming from where they were talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, there was a big difference in my understanding. And I think that's why I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like, yeah, like, I, when Coogee Rap dropped Rikers Island, I was on Rikers Island. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, there was a lot of things to my walk that you wouldn't know unless you knew me. There's no way to know that a based on can't the camp you. you were coming from. Oh, definitely. The native tongues? Nobody thought that. Well, you know, tongues. but I was also, you know, I, I was an affiliate of a few, though. Like, I was DITC on the low. Me and Showbiz had a house together. Nobody, mm. I didn't, nobody knew that. Yeah, me and Showbiz had a house. I had, I had, I had the upstairs. He had the downstairs. And um, that, was, that was when I moved from Valentine Avenue, me and Show got a house. Um, you know what I'm saying? So it was a walk to that. Then I'm also Flavor Unit, you know what I'm saying? I'm out in Jersey running okay. around. That was through Chris Lighty, mm. um, dropping who's native, but, but rest but, in peace, Chris Lighty. Rest in peace. I miss yeah. Chris so badly. But I'm um, just to say, um, you know, but Chris was a stand-up dude, and when he went to Def Jam, he knew that I would not be cut. I, you know, I had to let him know, like, I'm not comfortable going over there with you. You know, I had my issues with Def Jam as far as me meeting Leo and just not believing in him as an entity. Okay, let's let's spin up yes, to that. Let's yes, yes. let's take it from the top because okay. I, I don't want I don't want to skip any steps in the story like this. All right, all right. Take you back a little bit. Where, where does it begin? <clears throat> well, hip hop wise, I I'll start it off hip hop wise. Um. Hip hop. No, no, give me dreads. Yeah, give me, all right. Yeah, give me the man I, himself. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm from a story of projects. I, I, um, my parents, both my parents, are from the Bland Projects in Queens, of Flushing, the uh, uh, second and third building, and um, you know, say so they were a project love story. My father was a hustler. My mother got pregnant when she was 16. Hmm. My father was probably about 30. You know, what I'm saying, but he was straight up street hustler, Rico Vargas entire Vargas family in the bland, it's not hard to find out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he did what he did. Like, and he basically held down Flushing to the degree that Nicky Barnes came out from Harlem to try to recruit my father. Mm -hmm. That my father was like, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. And, you know, they didn't lock in like that, but just for him to make that kind of offer coming from uptown to Queens, that, you know, my father was making a little bit of noise, so to speak. So, um, you know, parents, of course, volatile as a motherfucker. Um, I wind up, my mom's wound up getting married to my stepfather who just graduated from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn on a basketball scholarship back when Pratt had a basketball team. He graduated from Pratt, goes into the army. He's a lieutenant. Marries my mom, brings us from Astoria Projects to Fayetteville, North Carolina, Fort Bragg. That was my introduction to the South. And... So I go into a high school called E.E. E. Smith in Fayetteville. Now I was really lucky to be coming from a projects to this particular school because this particular school was probably about 85, 90% black. Mm. And it made a big difference in who I was going to be. Because had I gone, because I was expecting the racism. I was expecting, this is my word. I, <laughs> my first day of school in Fayetteville and in Sanford, my first day, I got in fights. You know what I'm saying? Because I was in New York looking for it. Like, the second school, I wasn't necessarily looking for it. But the first one, I was, like, waiting for the first person to call me boy. Mm. Like, you know, like, like that's just where my head was at. Like, you know, I wish a nigga would call me boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything I'm hearing about the South, I'm young from the projects. And I was a real project kid. I'm flipping off the fence on the pissy mattresses. <laughs> I'm running around, you know what I'm saying, on, you know, the... Um, when the kind of big wheel was, you know, holding the wires and we used to walk them down the street and shit like that. <laughs> you know, like real problem, a real project kid. Like, you know, like I'm so project at, at a young age and the entire projects knew me. I could, and my mom gave me, like I said, she was young. So I, I ran around way too much at a young age. But I'm the kid that if there's a stray dog, I'm gonna find a rope, put the rope around the dog's neck and that's my dog. Literally, I'm walking around the projects with my dog. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the project kid I was. You know what I'm saying? My mom would have to be like, you know, not today, baby. You're like, you know, like, like, let the dog go. But that's, that was how project I was. So I get down to Carolina and it bugged me out because I was really fast. I was a fast kid. I snatched my first pocketbook at 11 years old. Mm. Literally. And um, so when I get down to Carolina, I'm meeting a different kind of black kid. And and I was an intelligent kid. My mom, thank God, was very intelligent, you know, and she kind of raised me to be intelligent, very natural, herbalist, all this shit at a very young age. I'm eating wheat germ. We didn't have sugar. I'm eating wheat germ with honey. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up very, na- you know what I'm saying, which, you know, uh, I didn't keep as much of that shit as I should have, but as I got older, I reverted back to it. But just to say, um, you know, so I was that kid, but I saw him peeping sharp black kid. I'm loud and shit like that, and I'm seeing real quick, oh shit, they're not laughing with me. They're laughing at me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm. it was a big difference real quick. So I jumped in line. I, I saw that the coolest thing I could be was smart. Like, oh, these motherfuckers are smart as fuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I needed to, to be able to see to compete. I wanted to be smart too. You know what I'm saying? So it look cool. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cool, like, 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 you know, like it wasn't cool to get kicked out of class. Nobody's laughing at you. You know, like you're not cool. Nobody wants to hang with you after class because you got kicked. Like being ostracized. The cool motherfuckers were intelligent, and I'm peeping this shit. Like, oh shit, and it made me emulate what I'm seeing. So yeah, I had this New York side of me definitely, but I also started trying to just see who I could be. You know what I'm saying? And it just opened me up to school. So I became a really good student. Where was your pops doing this? My real father? Still in touch? No. Mm-hmm. No. Like, um, on some real shit, my father was very volatile. And um, he damn near was like a pimp. He was a heroin dealer, but he used heroin as well, you know what I'm saying, off and on. And um, my pops was the type of person where my moms couldn't date anyone, and he knew it. It was going to be a volatile situation. It, furniture was definitely going to be moving around. Mm-hmm. That's just who he was. My pops was so volatile. When they really broke up and they were broken up, before my stepfather comes into the picture, my mom was trying to like not let him in. So he's assuming someone's in the apartment. You know, this is their apartment. They're right. married and shit, but she's trying to get away. So he's so volatile. We live on the second floor, 2F, 1-05, a story of Boulevard. And um, he's so volatile. I remember turning to my mom and saying, Ma, dad's at the window. He climbed up the projects to the second floor window and he's trying to come in the apartment through the window. This motherfucker fell. (laughs) 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 And ambulance had to come and get him. But that's how volatile he is. He's like, yo, I'm coming in the apartment. Like he climbed up to the second floor and was coming in. Like I'm telling my mom, dad's at the window. So your mom was happy to get to to get out the out the pain. Yeah, she was. She had enough. She was young, and you know, you know what she idolized at sixteen. She couldn't stand at twenty one. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like you know, like it is what it is. And um, you know, so by this time, my mom's is realizing like, yo, when we go down south, everybody called me Tiki, Tiki T I K I. That was my nickname. Everyone knew me as Tiki, from Astoria to the Bland, everywhere. When we moved down south, my mom is like, all right, you cannot get, be in touch with that side of your family at all. No one can call you Tiki. This is when Andrea starts and, you know, just any other. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Like, you know, like, like you know, like, and me and my father were close. Like, my father would take me everywhere. Literally, I've seen my father do way too much shit. And, um, like, I literally went to see Fritz the Cat in the movie theater. Like, my father really took me to an X-rated movie cartoon. I probably was 12. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, that's who my father was. So, um, you know, so for roughly nine years or so, no one knew where I was. No one, no one on my father's, no one on the Vargas family, probably like eight, nine years, no one knew where I was. No one knew anything about what happened. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, like, probably a little bit before we broke out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. <laughs> but I was in Sanford, first day of school, but, but it played just how I thought, hey boy, who you? What, was it another student or a teacher? Another student, white, right. bo- white boy on the basketball court. And I'm not realizing that down south, everybody calls everybody boy. Right. You know what I'm saying? But for a white boy to say, hey boy, that was all it took. I snuffed them, like literally on a basketball court. 
And, you know, and this is back when, uh, when I really thought I was related to Bruce Lee. You know what I'm saying? So surprisingly, the white boy had his. Like, he threw something back. And I'm like, oh, hold up. <laughs> so I'm tying my shoe, and he's laughing every time I shoe. I'm like, okay. I'm saying in my head, oh, this motherfucker really gonna fight. You know what I'm saying? I tie my shoe, you know what I'm saying? I was, this ain't gonna be quick and easy. Right, right, right. Because, you know, like, like my, my, growing up in the story, the few times I had run-ins with white cats were us being chased by, like, the Greeks or the Italians, but never, like, a one-on-one. -on -one. I always feel like, man, can a white, one white boy can't beat me. You know what I'm saying? That was just my mentality as a youngster. Of course, in life you learn that, you know, men are men and, you know, right. and such. So, you know, me and this kid go to, go to throw straight up and I do a roundhouse kick real quick and put my sneaker print right on his cheek. Pow! Mm. See it right on, clear as day. And right. so he's like, oh shit, like I'm in a fight. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, but like I said, way you feel. Like, right, 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 right. So, but he was with it, you know what I'm saying? And we went head up and, you know, it didn't take long. I kind of got the best of him quickly. That's just because I knew how to fight. Like I grew up fighting. I couldn't see my sister fight. I would fight. It didn't matter if you was a guy, girl. If you was fighting my sister, I had to take that. You know what I'm saying? Like I just grew up fighting. You know, that's just what it was. So um, you know, I go to the school and um, real quickly I become pretty popular and get in with a bunch of good good people. I meet a bunch of good cats down south, and my experience was dope. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm getting dope because I was already musical. I already was a cat, both my parents sung in bands at different points in their life. Mm. So music was always a calling for me. Um, a big a big record for me was Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder. Yes, yes. I learned awesome. every single word on both of those albums, including the Swahili, you know what I'm saying? I already spoke Spanish, you know what I'm saying? So I learned every single word. That was my introduction to words. You know, before I even left Astoria, you know what I'm saying? I'm on a linoleum floor playing this record back to back to back and I'm probably 10, 11, 12 years old, mm. you know what I'm saying? And this just, I wrote my first song to the instrumental on that album, My Mama's, My Mother's Core, My Mother's Core. I wrote my a first, my song, I wrote a song to it. Mm. It was before hip hop existed, right. you know what I'm saying? Did, so you when I, did you ever learn how to play instruments? When I'm down south, I wound up joining the um, marching band. I, took, I, I was playing trumpet, I, I, I played one year trumpet, gets me to the marching band. Now I'm in, I, I play, Trumpet, I'm in a marching band, I go into the jazz ensemble, and then I had one talent show singing. This is before hip hop. My moms would put me up against anybody singing. I had one talent show, so I joined the choir. They had an elite choir called Smith 16, where they take eight guys and eight girls from the entire school. They had a regular choir, but they had this elite choir with only eight guys, eight girls from the entire school that I would try out, and I made that. Mm. So I'm, my day is filled with music, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then I'm, you know, like definitely like a, a ball player. I'm very active. I'm very active, you know what I'm saying? And so like in gym, um, my, t my gym teacher happened to be the tennis coach. So, you know, in gym you play like some of everything. One week you play this, one week you play that. So when tennis came around, I'm killing them because I grew up playing handball. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it's the same dynamic. You're top spin, you're chopping, and you're trying to put the ball where they not. Mm -hmm. Same dynamics with a, with a racket. Tennis coach, my gym teacher thought I played. I'm like, I never played this shit in my life. Hmm. He's like, you're lying. So the first year, he's like, let me work with you. First year I'm there, I'm a varsity letterman in tennis. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this wow. shit is like, oh shit, like I didn't even, the, the school I would've went to in New York didn't even have a football team. Yeah, you hmm. wouldn't have got those opportunities at, at all. all. Yeah. Let alone, all. yeah, trumpet, yeah. a marching band, a jazz ensemble, Smith 16. Tennis. You know what I'm saying? Tennis. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I knew where I was. And I was like, oh shit, like I'm building something of myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it felt good. Like, you know, like this is way before computers. I took an elective just because I knew it was gonna be full of girls typing. I'm the only dude in typing class. But today I can look at you while I'm typing on a computer. Right, right. And it was that organic. You know what I'm saying? Like things were just like I only took that class because it was gonna be a bunch of girls in there. And I'm the new dude, so now I know all, you know, I'm meeting all of the cool girls yeah, and that and yeah. the other. I took type in one and two. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, like, that's how cool the shit was to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like, if you, but if you ain't know me and you walk about typing class and you see me with a bunch of girls and I'm not trying to be your friend, you can think whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. do, making my own moves and I'm doing my own thing and, and I'm solid with it. Like, you know, cats that are from New York, I'm bumping into. And so, long story much short, my mom's, my mom's is definitely a character. 
My stepfather, who I love with all my heart, big shout out to Tom Titus. Um, and he was helping me as well. He's helping me to become a man in a way that my father, um, not to say that he couldn't, but that just, um, I think a lot of times in life, especially as men, I think we grow to become who we're supposed to be. And my father hadn't grown to be who he was supposed to be yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So as much love as I know he has for me, he wasn't quite what I needed at that age. Okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? And your step-pops was. <clears throat> and my step-father was. He was, he, you know, he was an army, army military man. Plan. Very dis- Right, right, right. We woke up, yeah. You know, and, and, and had me looking at myself and, at, and my surroundings. You know what I'm saying? And I really needed it at this point in time. I probably needed him much more than the relationship wound up panning out because he had to go to Korea for a year. When he got back, my mom's is from the story of projects. She's wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, quick story about my mom's. Like, this is my mom. Like, I grew up, I'm the son of some hustling shit. We on Fort Bragg, we, we're not there six months. My mom calls me from the back. Tiki, Tiki, come up. Come, come here real quick. Come here. This is how I got introduced to weed. Huh. I'm like in eighth going to ninth grade. <laughs> Um, my mom's called me and it's like spring. She calls me up to the front. I get up to the front. She's spastic. She's throwing a coat on me. Throws a coat on me real quick. Zips it up. Goes in the closet. Pulls out a huge pillow of weed. Probably about a pound and a half of weed. Stuffs it up my jacket. So I was, well, I'm looking at mom. What the? I, as I'm trying to talk, she opens the door. I'm seeing two military police walking up to the door. She pushes me past them. All right, tell your mother I call her in an hour. Tell her I call her in an hour, okay? I knew what it meant. <laughs> I walk right by police and get missing for hours. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. Right. They came to That's, search the crib. Right. Yeah. That, that, you know, like I, I, I wasn't there. I don't know what they did, but I know I had a pound and a half of weed on me, and I find some place to go. And that was why. How old you in this? I'm uh, eighth school, going to ninth so, grade. Yeah, yeah. So he's okay. like 14, thir- no, 13. 13, 14, yeah. no, somewhere, 14, somewhere in there. 14, 15, yeah. somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know. Somewhere in there. Early right. teens. Right. But you knew what to do. You knew the assignment. Okay, yeah, but, but yeah, my mom's, I, I grew up in a house where, you know, I had the key around my neck and, you know, like I, ain't, I couldn't talk about nothing that went on in my house. Mm. Nothing. Like, mm-hmm. plus shit was going on in my house. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, I couldn't right. talk about nothing. You know, so I came up like that where my mom's telling me... You know, tell your mom I'm calling an hour. I knew, you know, I, I got ghosts. And so, um, you know, but when I came back, I was high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was the introduction for me. Into- Wait, so you, you, have, you never smoked weed before that? No. Nah. You were smoking weed already? No, 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 I wasn't smoking weed. Oh, shit. That was my, when I came back, I was high. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had seen enough weed rolled and, you know, that's back when you, you know, get your seeds out and all that, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, so I had seen enough of it and, you know... Had wanted to smoke, but never had smoke. Mm-hmm. Now I had a pound of weed. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? And I was that kid where, yeah. you know, you're not going to give that to me and I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to do something. Right, right. So, um, you know, so that became, you know, my introduction. And um, what did she say when you walked in high? Good job. Like, she didn't feel the need to explain to her kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was more you know how moms found that shit. Right, 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 right. 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 You know, like, she's like, you know, all right, cool, you did right. You know, this and the mm-hmm. other. You hungry? You know, like, you know, you know, yeah, mom's is, I'm high yeah. as hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I'm very hungry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so I came up in that kind of household. But it was So it, by the time, real quick, so by the time your step pops came back from Korea, it was a whole nother situation going on at my, when back. when my stepfather came back from Korea, like like yeah, I, I, somebody ain't told nobody. I I ran away from home mm. when I was in high school. I ran away from home and I got on a bus. Why? Now because my mom went on a date with some nigga that I'm like, you bugging the fuck out. Oh. Mm. Well, that shit, that shit broke my heart because I'm looking at her like, yo, this is a good, this, my stepfather's a good dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, she really fucked me up with that. Whereas, you know, she's still young and she's kind of like, he's going for a year and I'm not looking at, you know, I'm, I'm not an adult to see it through adult eyes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm looking at it like, yo, this you motherfucker took you. us from a story of projects my life is different. What are you doing? And it's going good. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, like, what are you doing? We up. You things know what I'm saying? Cool. Right. Things is good. Here. Right. Right. So, so Pete this. So, me and my step pops is cool. So, my mom knows I'm disappointed in her. You mm. know what I'm saying? She knows I'm upset with her. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but she doesn't have a life while he's, 
she really might not have had a life while he was there because as I grew, I saw from adult eyes that she did that more for, probably for us right. than for her relationship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was probably more for me and my sister, to be honest with you. But I couldn't see it from that viewpoint and didn't even care. Mm-hmm. All I knew was you fucking up. So I wrote a letter to my step pops. But I'm not speaking. You know, I, like one of the things that I really grew up with, you don't talk about shit in your house. Right. My mom thought I'm telling my step pops about what the fuck's going on. So she takes the letter, opens it in front of me and reads it. Only to apologize, like, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit has nothing to do with right, nothing. Right. Even though me and you beefing, you my son, and damn, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm disgusted. It's my word. I knew her stash, everything. Is it. I act like I go to school. I don't go to school. I turn around, come back. I hit her stash. I go buy an Amtrak ticket. Take my little trumpet. I remember um, this uh, when Silly was at. Was it Silly? Uh, well, it was probably been out, but I remember learning on a little box I had that if I turned the turned the um the balance to all the way to the right, just the horns on silly play. Dun, 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 you know what I'm saying? So I'm learning mm. even about you know what I'm saying how to how to fuck with music running them away. I get on a bus, uh, take the bus to Port Authority, get off Port Authority, get in the cab, get overcharged for a cab to Laurelton to my grandmother's. When I get out the cab at my grandmother's, she comes to the door, she was like, I knew you was coming here. You know what I'm saying? Come in, uh, let me make you something to eat, and then we gotta call your mother. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, you know, I told to my mom, she's apologizing this, that, and the other. I want my, my, my grandmother let me stay for about a week. She was like, all right, you gotta go home now. You know what I'm saying? So I go back home, and, you know, my mom was apologizing. It was, it, was, it was a good moment for us, whereas, you know, like, like my stepfather hadn't gotten back yet. But it was a good moment for us where I think my mom's just kind of saw like, you know, like, damn, what I'm doing is really affecting my kids. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I think she really needed to have that understanding like, yo, this shit is bigger than me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times as parents, we don't get that shit until it's too late. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like and I, I had that, that, that pure kid naiveness where you don't have to be anything else but you know, but, but who are you supposed to be? You see your mother through rose-colored glasses. Without question. You know, she, she's flawless. And then you see her but, do this thing. But, see, but that's the thing. Like, I really, my life was like, I had an opportunity to see my mom in various spectacles mm-hmm. at various times. But your mom is your mom. Right. You know what I'm saying? So even when your mom does something you don't like, that's still your mom. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I hated what she did, but... I, you know, was in my place to tell my stepfather, you know, I would never. My little sister told my stepfather on the law. Oh, shit. Word. He came right back. Yeah, he did. Y'all got the, you and your sister, same mother, same father? Yeah. Same mother, same father, but by about three, four years difference, though. Mm -hmm. So she's much younger, and she didn't grow up necessarily adhering to the same rules I did. She was much younger. Right, right, right. So my stepfather came back. She told him what she knew. You know what I'm saying? And whatever she told him, I have no idea what she told him, but that was enough for him to be like, look, this ain't gonna work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's my word. My, my junior going into my senior year, he was he was like, you know, like, after he gave my mom some paper, but my mom was smart enough to put herself through NYU, so she was sharp enough to get a job as the um, at a social services in a small town called Sanford. Mm. We moved to this small town called Sanford because my parents are now not together stepfather you know like that was done so now we're in a new place new school but we got our own house okay all right and we on the white side of town okay all right mm. go ahead mom i see you all right we, i know where we came from we all right we gonna do what we're gonna do first day of school <laughs> very first day of school me and my sister something i didn't like me and my sister gotta ride the same school bus i'm in high school she's in junior high school i'm like oh god you know what I'm saying? Like, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, like, like they drop off a handful of kids at the junior high school before we go to the high school. We get on, it's a rainy day, waiting for the bus, me and my sister. And when the bus comes, it's totally full. It's not one seat that's empty. So I'm like, oh, shit. So we got to ask Cass to sit three to a seat. So we go to the middle of the bus, all white, see a white, not one black face on this entire bus. We got begrudgingly asked Cass, yo, could we squeeze in here? 
She's gonna sit right here. We both of us like one cheek on the shit and sitting one cheek in the aisle, in the aisle leaning right. on damn near leaning on each other. And all of a sudden, from the back of the bus, I start hearing like, oh shit, we got niggas on our bus. Oh my god. I'm like, what? Yeah, damn, we got niggas. Niggas on our fucking bus. Get the fuck out of here. I turn around. Everybody's like, I'm like, oh shit. I turn back around. What you looking at, nigga? I'm like, huh? Turn around, everybody looking away. Now I'm noticing that the condensation on the windows, you know how you can write on the windows. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking around, I'm seeing nigga written on windows. I'm seeing get off the bus. You, you know what I'm saying? Like nigga written on the back door window, all the condensation, everywhere where you can write, motherfuckers is writing bullshit. And I'm like, oh shit. But every time I turn back around, what you look, why you turning around? Don't turn around, nigga. So now I'm just like, oh shit, what's about to play? I look to my sister, my sister is shaking and crying. Mm. That was it for me. Yeah. That, was, that mm. was it. That was it for me. <clears throat> so now, now I go straight to Story Projects for these motherfuckers. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now I'm sitting like this. One of them yells out, nigga! I turn. I caught the... Caught Tried to act like... Got him. Gingerly stood up. Sauntered to the back. <laughs> Put up, stood right over this dude, and when he went to say whatever he was about to say, I just caught him. Bow. You know what I'm saying? Just kept punching. Bow, bow. I started beating him, put both, both my hands on the shit, started stomping this nigga between the seat. My dude, I'm damn near hitting my head on the shit, trying to stomp this dude through the bus. Everybody jumps out of my fucking way. No one touches me. Bus driver pulls over, comes back, has to pull me off this kid. Kid's a mess. We get to school. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't how I play. We get to school, you know what I'm saying? My mom's comes and said the other. Could just go back first day of school. First day of school. My first day of school. Kids a mess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's a mess. You know what I'm saying? First day of school, my mom's comes up. I tell her everything that happened. She's like, you did what you're supposed to do. Right That's in front of the vice president, you did what you're supposed to do. That's a fact. So she's like, look, all right, well, so they're trying to suspend me. So my mom's is like, look, he didn't do wrong. I'll allow you to suspend him off the bus, but you can't suspend him from school. Mm -hmm. I'll bring him to school for however long y'all suspend him off the bus, but he didn't do wrong. He was protecting the system, protecting himself. And if what he's saying is true, you should be looking to suspend da 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 da. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. I don't know how it played out for the kid, but the next week or whatever, 10 days, whatever time goes by, my mom's is like, look, I'm not taking you anymore to school. Y'all getting back on that bus. Today. So it's crazy because the day we go, my second day to get on this bus, it was like the very first day. It's raining. God Me and my station. sister waiting for the bus. Bus pulls up. It's a sea of white kids. Walking my sister down the aisle. This white kid stands up. He's like, yo. You want to take my seat? Me and him, because me and him. <laughs> that shit spread fine. real quick. Right, right, right. So he gives me the seat. He makes the white boy that's in the seat with him get up. They both both sit three to a seat. And they gave me and my sister the seat. Mm. Word of everything I love. The next week, I'm in the back of the bus telling these niggas New York stories. Like, y'all niggas just don't understand. <laughs> 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 Nigga, you could be standing on the sidewalk. Wow! <laughs> nigga just blow your shit off. You know what I'm saying? They like, what? I'm like, I'm telling y'all niggas, y'all don't understand shit. You know what I'm saying? This is my word. The next week, it was my bus. Mm. Like, to the degree that when I got a girlfriend, I had the bus driver picking up my girlfriend where she lived. So she'd be on the bus. We're like, like I had so much juice at this school, mm. you know what I'm saying, after a moment. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, being there was a culture shock to them. For real, for real. Yeah. Like, like, you know, and, and, and even me telling yeah. them stories and this and the other, like, they yeah. were on every word, like, you know, like, and of course I'm embellishing, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm. You don't understand, like New York is just a whole thing, you know, like you thought I was DMX out there, like, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just to say, like, you know, but so that was my senior year of high school. Now, what was really dope about my senior year of high school was that th now this school is the opposite of E.E. E. Smith. If E.E. E. Smith was 85, 90% black, this school's 85, 90% white. Mm -hmm. yeah. I stopped playing in trumpet because. I looked at that marching band and like E.E. E. Smith, like we're playing like, you know, um, we're playing um, um, uh, 
Rip it, baby, whip it, baby, and she, you know, we're doing dance routines and this and the other to mm-hmm. break it down. Or, you know, it's like Morgan State. You know, what I'm saying like, oh, gotcha. we got an all black band, we high stepping. This dope, dope black Man, soul this one, school. This school was like, blah, 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 blah. yeah. So no, I put no, the trumpet right. down. And I was like, yeah, I can't even do that. You know, what I'm mm-hmm. saying, and it was just, I was like, oh man, no more singing. No, no more, more singing, no flavor. No, 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 no more no tennis. More flavor. Tennis? I played tennis. Pete no this. Tennis. I played tennis. I was varsity lemon at this school. I was the only black kid on the tennis team. And the day I got in a fight with one of my teammates, because the day that we're playing a black school, this motherfucker has the audacity to turn to me and be like, look all the niggas we playing. What? <sighs> that was in NC? <laughs> this is in North Carolina. This is my senior year. I'm at a white school, and my teammate right. turns to me, we playing a black school. He's like, look all the niggas we got to play. Like you were Oreo. Yeah, I smacked him with my racket like it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? That's my work. I smacked yeah. him with my racket like it didn't matter. And, you know, and told the coach, wow, what he said. Coach chastised him and was like, you can't be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but I played tennis my senior year, but that, you know, that took place. Um, so um, my, my, my saving grace is I meet this cat named Stan. Stan is from Brooklyn. I meet this cat named D Ski. D Ski's from, from Philly. Cat named Rondu. Rondu's from Brooklyn. Freddie D. Freddie D's from Brooklyn. I'm like, okay. They ain't but maybe a hundred black kids at the school, but eight of them, I'm, I'm, you know, like, I'm like, okay, this is it. My man Stan had equipment. He had turntables, mics, cassette, uh, dual decks, and everything, a little Dr. Rhythm beatbox machine. And his mom let him smoke and drink in the crib. Mm. Oh, so oh, it's lit. So every day now. It's right. like New York. So every day, right, right. And this <laughs> hey, is my New York crew. So every day, I'm going to Stan's house. Every day, we in his room, just cutting, just rhyming, just because. We're in Sanford, North Carolina. It's not like we're looking for a deal. It's not like it's going to happen. we just doing it because we the New York cats, and hip-hop is young and new. Wait, so quick question. So what year was this? This is uh, 84, 85. All right, so hip-hop was just fresh on the scene in New York. Right. But how did how do you feel it reached NC? Because I always was told that the South got it late from New um, York. Well, see, all right, like I'm from New York, so every summer I'm in New York. Okay. Every summer, right. that makes so sense. you're important. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. And your crew yeah. is from New York. My crew's from New York. Right, right. I'm no with cat. I'm import. with New York cats, and my cousin Double F from Boom Bash, who comes down from his from my senior year. He has turntables. You know what I'm saying? And, and he had turntables like the summer before I'm up in New York and he had turntables. So I'm touching vinyl for the first time, you know what I'm saying, even before I get to my man's room. So when I get there, I'm like, oh shit, it's on and hip hop is young, you know what I'm saying? So like my favorite album at this point in time is like Phil is for Problems of the World Today. That was my favorite mm-hmm. album at oh, this wow. point. Just Ice's album is another tremendous album to me. Um, so, you know, so we're young boys touching vinyl and, you know, all of us could spin, all of us could rhyme. They would rhyme like at a talent show or wherever there was an open mic. I only rhyme in my man's room. So no one else knew I could rhyme except cats in the room. You know what I'm saying? So when you go outside the crib and you go to these uh When we go to parties shows, and shit, you spin they grab, no, no, nope. I mean, I'm with, I'm with my dudes, but, right. you're not doing but I'm you're not, not doing participating. Anything. Anything. Yeah, right, yeah, right, nothing. Right. I'm not, and I'm probably the nicest MC on a low. But that's just because I was very studious, you know what I'm saying, prior. I, I, I always thought I was going to be a writer on the low. So your vocabulary was a little... Extensive. More, Definitely. More right. advanced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. yeah. You know, and, and like I said, I thought I was going to write for a magazine or for a newspaper. Like, I always had am, ambitions to write. You know what I'm saying? And then hip-hop just was formatted to me. And, and I had so much musical knowledge. It was almost like basketball knowledge. Like, I am a dope ball player on the low. But just say... I had, a, I had a high, I had a high music IQ. So for you me, huh? You cheated a little bit. You had more back. No, but how did he cheat? Because he because he came in number one with two family members who were musically inclined. He had multiple family members from New York who were bringing him back. Yeah, but how's that it. cheating? That was his purpose. No, no, it, <laughs> that's purpose cheating, right cheating there. As in it I had a little cheat code. As in it, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It puts it puts you beyond your peers. Yeah, yeah. Because your is, peers yeah. are in this time. And you're coming in with two, three generations worth of music in your head. It's, right, like, it's not a fair fight. I had already written to Stevie Wonder's instrumental. I was about to right, go back right. to and, You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so for me, I've always looked at hip-hop, like some cats look at it as versing. You know, like they write verses. I've always written songs. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you'll notice, like, it's always a cohesive verse to hook. It's it's always cohesive, you know, like, like, like because it's all about, it's a song. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'd, I'd equate myself to Simon and Garfunkel on hip hop mm. side. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, 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 I, I'm the Beatles. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna write a song, whereas another cat's gonna write 16, and yeah, that's cool. But I'm gonna hit you conceptually with something that's gonna make sense. Right. And a lot of cats, especially where hip hop was young, you'd hear if somebody was rhyming on an R and B song, fucking rhyme wouldn't have anything to do with what the song was about because cats were versing. Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Cats were just saying what they thought I was that, hot. You noticed that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. But but I always felt like you know like I always peeped that and I always felt like yeah I'm gonna be the difference in that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? One of the things I've always grown you know like well since the success of Black Sheep was. My name is Drez. I'm the difference between a dope beat and a hit record. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know, like without me, it's just a dope beat. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna make that into a dope record. Like, I'm gonna make a song. I'm not gonna make a verse that you like. I'm gonna make a song that you like. That's always been my mentality. Pebbles. The joint you did with Pebbles. Huh? The joint oh, you did with uh, work. Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams, not Pebbles. Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that joint. All right. And it was super crisp. He's right. It was super crispy. The lyrics went directly with what she was singing about. The whole thing was about work. Yeah. Mm. And he didn't just mm. come in with verses. The whole thing was about him working. I gotta go to work later. That was like the last, uh, yeah, the no last doubt. one. Right, right. You know, say like like but but you know, but that was always something that peeped in our culture. Like, you know, like she could be on some love shit and niggas like, so I murdered the nigga and I, 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 back to you, boo. I love you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh man, like nah, you know. Like, you know, <laughs> these clothes don't match. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. You got Mishmash Sasa, bro. But um, yeah, like, you know, so that was, you know, like those are the little nuances that I knew existed in myself. You know what I'm saying? So stood you apart from right. what was happening. From the clock. Yeah. Yeah. And so like and, and and my senior year is the breeding ground. Like I said, we had no idea what the future held. So every day I'm at my man's house, we making rhymes, making cut tapes. Um, those these twins, these uh, sisters Yvonne and Levon from Brooklyn, they were dope. Um, and you know what I'm saying? Like every day we could smoke, we're drinking 40s, and we're writing rhymes every day, every day, every day. So by close to the end of my senior year, everybody in the room is nice. Mm-hmm. We all could spin, we all could rhyme, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But there was one cat that was at the junior high school where my sister went that would come through and tear our asses on the turntable. From junior high school. From junior high school. Mm. Long. Long. Shorty Doo-Wop. His name was Shorty Doo-Wop. Mm. And that was my man Stan's little man. You know what I'm saying? Now Stan is volatile. Like Stan is a straight strong all like, like he checking pockets in high school and all that shit. Like he's straight Brooklyn. But that was his little man. And mm-hmm. he made sure Long was good. So I made sure Long was good because that's my man. You know what I'm saying? So me, Stan, and Long, we go to Raleigh where my man Craze, um, was on top of the Raleigh Coliseum. He had a show coming through. The show was The Real Rock Sand versus Sparky D. Mm. And hosting was Red Alert. So we go to the show. I got on the, the maroon leather suit. <laughs> My man got mm-hmm. on the black leather suit. We had a blazer, you know, like the Run DMC blazer, leather pants, the whole shit. Like, you know, we was down south repping like York, nobody's like business. Right. So, um, you know, and, uh, so we bought Long there, and we had enough juice with my man Craze to get Long on the turntables in front of everybody. Oh, that's crazy. So mm. Long is so little, he had to stand on milk crates so that he could stand above the turntables. Long was Shorty doo that was his name. He was little, really a little dude. But he was one of the most amazing DJs I had ever seen. Mm. Just just nimble and just mad nice. This is back when um, uh, Mixmaster Ice is <laughs> You had to be able to do that. To, that be able to do anything, you had to be able to do that. Mm. Long was bananas wicked, just crisp, you know, and, and killing it to the degree that Red Alert is like, yo, to who are you? Okay. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we with him, you know what I'm saying? We like, you know, like this our little man, you know, he's repping our crew, this that, and the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were the CMCs, the Chase MCs. And um, so Red is enamored with Long. He's like, yo, you know. Where you from? He's like, I'm from New York, but I'm you know down here. But I come to New York every summer. Mm-hmm. So Red gives him a number. Yo, when you come to New York, get at me. That summer, Long goes to New York, gets up with Red. Now, I done left. It might even have been the next summer. When I finished school, I was out. I broke the week I finished school, I was back in New York. I come back to New York. 
But little do I know that every summer, Long's coming up and getting up with Red. Mm. Red has Long in the studio when the Jungle Brothers are making their first album. Mm. He's introducing them. You know now he's start producing. No, no. He's just, he just introducing them as a okay. young DJ. All right. You know what I'm saying? On the low, Long did the cuts on Buddy. On the low. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's crazy. Wow. Crazy, right? That's a good record. All right, yeah, no oh, doubt. You dress. That's my shit. But, to but just day. to say, but he's in the cut. He ain't, you know, like he's just, you know, I don't even think he's Mr. Long. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like they just know him shorty doo sure, You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I come back to New York. I'm telling y'all a little bit about, you know, my father. I had a lot of street props um, where I'm from. My father had, my father's, my grandmother had 13 kids. My father's the oldest. Okay. The Vargas family is a very big family. Everybody hustled. You know what I'm saying? So got a bunch of uncles, aunts, cousins back in the Bland Projects in Queens. So when I finish school, I come back to New York. I get up with my father, who I haven't seen in seven, eight, nine years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's literally like, oh, you know, like it's just a rebirth of our relationship. And when I get up with my father, he's not the person I remember. Mm. He's a Jehovah Witness. Oh, Ooh. wow. My he mind was blown, blown. Because wow. as much as I had learned and as self-sufficient as I was able to be coming from where I was coming, I had ambitions of running with my father. I thought we was about to be on some street shit. I'm like, I already know like there's money here. I already know the projects. I already, I grew up with the children of hustlers. And he's completely left and he's that life alone. way over there with it. That's crazy because mm, crazy. real quick, like my mom's was like that in Red Hook Projects. She was a ultimate hustler in the street, doing whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. And I got locked up and I come home and she's a Jehovah Witness. Yo. So to, to Yo. Wait, I know what you mean. Already. That shit was, that, so that probably that? was more culture shock than me going down south. Yeah. Real That's talk. normally yeah. the kind of thing you hear about dudes doing after they get locked up. Yeah, they right. Find religion and come home, and it's, yeah, it's different. So for somebody I, to find it in the street, I is, think. Is different. I think what happened to my father's kids had a lot to do with what wound up happening to him. You know what I'm saying? Like his family was gone. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like like overnight, and he didn't know where we was. He, you know what I'm saying? Like his whole life got turned Your upside moms down. Told you not to be in contact with them, no and more. we wasn't for mm. years. Mm. For years, my grandmother, no one on the Spanish side of my family knew where we were. So his ways drove his family away, right. and he was left with nothing. To a degree, like I, yeah. I, I, I didn't see the transition, but I would have to assume that that, that had kind of to do with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I get back to New York, he's a different person. You know what I'm saying? But all of my friends are hustling. Mm. Everybody I grew up, everybody I've known all of my life, they're the children of hustlers. Like I'm from the projects. Everybody's parents hustled. You know what I'm saying? Especially mm-hmm. like you know like I. Especially from the clique I was in, like, you know, like my father's friends had kids that were my friends. My father's friends were hustlers. My mother's friends had kids that were my friends. My mother's friends were all about that life as well. Like, you know, like I had real project family. So when I get back to New York, everybody, oh shit, Tiki's back. This, that, and the other, yeah, yeah, my family, my cousins. Uh. So initially, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get a job and this, that, and the other. But all of my family is hustling. And this is the 80s, cats is heavy, running around. My, my, my friends I grew up known since peeing in the bed type shit, all hustle and make money. Like, you know, like real money. Mm-hmm. And I'll go, let me tell y'all a couple of things real quick. The first job I go get, first job I go get, this is a crazy story. First job I go get, like I got a little musical background. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but it's there. First job I find in the newspaper is at Power Play Studios. Power Play Studios is in Long Island City, the home of DJ Doc Rodriguez, Ivan Rodriguez, um, fucking Molly Mall. So many dope records were fucking recorded there. KRS music, fucking Rakim, just that, like Mad Cats. It's right next to Queensbridge, across the street from Queensbridge. Of course, none of this matters to me. I, I don't know this at the time. Mm-hmm. None of these records have even come out yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. But one of the people that is out is Rakim, Eric B and Rakim. The first day I got this job, my very first day that I got the job, they're breaking down to me, all right, you're the office manager, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna sit behind the desk, da da da, da you'll be handling, blah, 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 blah. And all right, you're good, okay, cool. It's your first day, we're out. They leave me behind the desk. I'm like, okay, all right, this is cool. Who comes out of the fucking studio? I didn't see him go in the studio, he was there, I guess, when I got there. 
Who comes out? Rakim. Comes out, walks up to the desk, like, yo, you got a light? I hand him my light. He just takes it and walks back into the studio. <laughs> so now I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to know Rakim, but it ain't going to be because he took my lighter and didn't bring it back. I can't fucking work this job. I swear to everything I love. That Dude, was the first, not- that was the first and last day I worked at Power Play Studios because, he took because I was going to know Rakim, but he ain't going to know me as the nigga behind the desk. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. not that's that's not that's the pride ego. Yeah, yeah the it's pride real talk. Thing, yeah. I'm gonna know Rakim, and this and and this is literally what it was about. I didn't go back. I didn't ask for the day's pay. Nothing. Just never went back. He's not gonna know me as the little dude. He's not gonna know me as a dude. He took his lighter and thanks, Jordy. Like, right. but I'm gonna know him one day, mm-hmm. and this is in my heart. Right. I can't work this job. Never went back. Never went back to this job. That's it. So. Quick, there's a quick flash forward. So maybe a month and a half ago, when uh, when Red Bull hired me and Rakim to be the entertainment at the fucking BC fucking uh, breakdancing championships at the Hammerstein, I'm sitting in my dressing room with Rakim, damn near wiping tears from my eyes mm. because it meant that much to me. Should have asked him for a lighter. <laughs> That's what I tell you. <laughs> then walk out the room. Walk the room. Just roll out the room. Nah, but you know, but we talk, we, we talk it, and I tell him, you know, I tell him the whole shit, and he wanted to invite me to his crib to, to record some music, bro. Like, like that shit was just so surreal. Like, like, like I was just like, like wow, and and I knew in my heart where that energy came from. When I left that job, it was because I was going to know Rakim, but he was not going to know me as that. We are right. not going to skip past the fact that you just said you have music with Rakim. No, 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 not yet. He invited me. But you haven't recorded it. I haven't recorded right. it. So, okay. so, so, so I'm right. looking forward to that. I'm looking, that, uh, no, I'm looking forward to that. We're about to let that one happen. I'm definitely like, like that's, yo, you know what I'm saying? And when that comes into fruition, that's going to take my story even to another place because, you know what I'm saying? Like... Like, yo, like, you know, like, every word I just said is the goddamn truth. I worked at Power Play Studio for one day and never went back because of Rock Hill. All right. That's ill. Yeah, right? And then it comes back around full circle. Mm-hmm. So, all right, so, so um, back, to, yeah. back to the story. Better alert. So, long. yeah, so, so, yeah, so I'm back in New York. My father's a um, Jehovah's Witness. Well, Jehovah's Witness. Fucked me up because I really thought I was about to get on some street shit. So, I wound up getting a, a job at a. Um, First at a law firm, Ornstein and Brown, then at a bank. Now, while I'm at the bank, I'm working a week at the bank. I make, make $300, whatever, whatever, especially back then. Probably after taxes, it's probably not even that much. But mm-hmm. I work at a bank, which is a good job. You know what I'm saying? Solid, growth potential, safe. And I'm working new accounts. I got a desk with my name on it. Fucking tellers don't even like me because I'm you know, uh, that intelligent. That I come in and apply for something that, you know, that that I'm wearing a suit to work every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm literally 19 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm going to work and I'm coming home and all of my cousins and friends are hustling. I'm making 300, 400, if I'm lucky, a week. They making that shit in an hour. Mm. And I worked it for a while, but when I go to hang out with my friends and family... I can't do the shit that they could do. You're out of place. You can't afford it. I, uh, yeah, like, like I can't do <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? They got OJ on hold for the night. You know what I'm saying? Like whoever cab service is, all right, cool. You're going to wait for us while we go into the movies. And we'll, you know, we'll pay you how much? All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, and cats was making money. We, all young cats, that they g off every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For me to see a G was... Work. You got to wait a couple You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so slowly, I jump out there, whereas, all right, I'm just going to sell a couple of bags here and there just to offset. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need to be on a strip but for an hour. I can make two, $300. Mm-hmm. Let me offset what I'm doing with a little bit of that. It eventually got to the point that it didn't make sense for me to go to work because that shit was stopping me from making money. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, that was the beginning of trouble, to be honest, you know what I'm saying? A couple of things took place. Um, one is my father lost his fucking mind that eventually he gets word that I'm hustling. Eventually he sees me hustling. 
Now, like I said, I've been fighting my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't nothing new to me. So on the day when my father walks up behind me on the strip, and we, it's all niggas, we all on the strip hustling. So it's about a good 10, 15 niggas on the strip. With me. My father walks up behind me, taps me on the shoulder. When I turn around, my father slaps the shit out of me. Bow! Mm. Before I saw it was my father, my face went this way, and I brought it back with a punch. Bow! Caught my father in the jaw. Knocked him down. When I saw it was my father, he got took off. <laughs> took off. Like, like, like. <laughs> I know how volatile my father is. Yeah. Right, right. You don't you know want that reaction. You don't want that. My father chased me around the Bland Projects all day. <laughs> <laughs> all day, my nigga. My father chased me around the Bland Projects all day because I embarrassed him. He embarrassed me, but I, embarrassed, I, I but I didn't see him. This is my word. I got slapped, didn't see nothing, just brought it back. Yes, Boom, just caught him. Yeah. Right. And caught him well. This is my word. This nigga was throwing bricks at me. Like, like yo, Damn. he's trying to kill me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's literally trying to kill me. I'm like, oh, shit, I fucked up. Eventually, I get tired. I'm like, yo, fuck Jehovah this shit. Jehovah's Witness went away for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that shit was out the window. He was trying to hurt me, for real. So, I go home. I go to my grandmother's house, pardon me. I go to my grandmother's house. I'm exhausted. I jump in the shower. Smart enough to bring clothes in the shower with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already know, like, something said my father's gonna come in here. And of course, as soon as I come out of the bathroom, my father's standing right there with a fucking extension cord. I'm like, come on, Pop. Like, like we're not gonna do this, Pop. Like, I'm sorry, Zaniella. And this was kind of like a passing of the guard, so to speak. Like, my father goes to swing this extension cord. I catch it. Boom. Pop, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, and now he's trying to swing at me, and I'm like, I push him. And he's an older man. Like, he falls back into the closet. And now I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, this shit is just going horrible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, I sit him down. I apologize to this and the other and as best I can. And, you know, he's trying to explain to me, like, you know, I've been through everything you could ever think of. Don't do this. This is not what you want to do. Of course, I'm a youngster. And I'm everyone around me is getting money. So I try not to disrespect them in his face, but I'm hustling, you know, and, that, and eventually I'm not going to job at the bank because it doesn't, it, eventually I'm hustling, that's what I'm doing. So I'm there for the transition of cat sniffing coke to crack cocaine industry, you know what I'm saying? And mind you, I'm from a time when cats would pass around a bill of coke like it was a blunt. Like, you know, in the 80s in New York, you might be in the Red Parrot, Bentleys, and Shit, man, baby wise might be motherfucking reaching into a fucking uh, ounce of, and just putting blow in everybody's goddamn bill. Like, like it was that accepted. It's like how you know it is now. Right, right, right. It was literally that accepted. And um, so I'm there for the transition into crap. So I'm there when cats start making real money. We was hustling and we might make a little G a day. But when crack comes, niggas is now making five G's a day. You know what I'm saying? Little niggas. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing the transition. So New York invents the TNT, the task force, um, the Queen's task force, because of the crack epidemic. I probably was one of the first two, three hundred motherfuckers to get arrested by them. Mm. Direct sale. I, I, I felt it too. I felt it when I made the sale. I'm like, Corvette, white couple, projects. <laughs> Let me go change this money. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. after I made the sale, I run in, I change, you know, smart enough to, to do that, thank God. But just to say, nonetheless, when I come back out the building, I got cracks on me. You know what I'm saying? There he is, brown jacket, leather jacket. I had a Banana Republic a baseball jacket on, I'll never forget. As soon as I come out, there he is, I turn right back in. They come running in after me. In my fucking haste, I run past the floor I'm running to. I'm running to the second floor, I run to the third floor. And when I realize I'm on the wrong floor, I'm knowing police are behind me. I'm like, oh shit, I run straight to the incinerator. Go to pull the pack out, the pack just pops, pow! Cracks oh. all over the fucking floor. I'm like, god damn! So I'm trying to get as much as I can to throw them away, but I'm like, fuck, I gotta get away from this. Mm -hmm. So I just try to get off this floor. As I'm trying to go back to the fucking stairs, officer's walking right up on the floor. He doesn't see the cracks yet, but he just sees me, so I'm like, I gotta get around this nigga. It's hallway. I literally try to hit him with the juke and run around him. 
This nigga tackles me, grabs me. Now we're fighting. We're literally fighting. I'm trying to get away from this nigga, but we fighting. Till eventually he just pulls out the gun and puts it in my face. It's like, stop. To which they throw the cuffs on me and beat the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. No bullshit. They beat my ass. My, I, I never forget when I got my picture taken. I had this brown banana republic jacket, leather jacket. That shit was all maroon spotted from, mm-hmm. from the blood on my face. The kid was a mess. A mess. They throw me in a car with a bunch of other motherfuckers. Go stop at another Patty projects. Yo, go, yeah, pack, yo, go at another projects. Go some other niggas. Throw us all in. So like I said, I come from a little team, this and the other. Um, I get bailed out kind of immediately. Cool. Now the team I'm rocking with, big shout to my family, for real, for real. Um, big shout to Lord, Shajim, uh, rest in peace, Steve-O, Shorty Black. You know what I'm saying? Um, JR, Pop. What up? You know what I'm saying? Like, like real cats, you know what I'm saying? Real New York cats. Get bailed out of me. The cats is like, yo, and I'm real like, shit. Niggas ain't sweating none of the, not what happened. If you want to run, whatever. Niggas ain't sweating none of this shit. I'm like, yo, I'm out. Uh, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not dealing with this shit. I know I'm dirty. I know I, I, know I made the sale. Mm-hmm. I know I'm guilty. I'm like, yo, I'm going down south a bit. I jump bail, going down south. My man Paris down south, another cat from down south that I didn't shout, but shit of Paris is like this country cat, but he's wild as fuck. <laughs> Me and Paris wound up getting caught up robbing a party. Yes. Hey, what? <laughs> yeah. That's some Brooklyn shit, man. <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah, I'm, right I'm a young, I was a young wild kid. So we robbed this party. Um, there was a um, uh, board and brick. Whose idea was this? My man's, but I was with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's even in the lyric, you know what I'm saying? It was your man's idea, but the time is yours. But just say, um, like, so we um at this, at this, I always dress to attend. That's one thing. The crew I came up with, even at a young age, I was always to, dressed to attend, even as a street cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, however you see me, I'm always dressed to get in something, whether or not I'm on the list or not. Like, you know, I'm always gonna be presentable. I'm always gonna look clean. I'm always gonna have a clean cut to me because shout out to H. All right. Yeah. And Gat. Shout out to H. All right. And, and Champ. No, I'm regular, man. I'm comfortable. And bigger. But, and bigger. And like, and you know bigger. what I'm saying? But just but just being clean, you know what I'm saying? Like that shit gets you in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like when you don't look disheveled, when you look you look, you know, like when you look like you paid some money for your shoes or your sneakers or you know what I'm saying? Like in trouble when you walk in. You right, right, you don't right. Look like you're trying to start. Anything. Right. So so we're literally at this board and brickyard party for the people who work there, but we don't work there. We just crash the shit, but we look like we belong. So we in a spot, the chick behind the fucking coat check takes a liking to me. I'm peeping furs, pocketbooks, all kind of shit in the coat check. I'm like, yo, B, <laughs> go get the car, bring it up. I'm taking shorty out of here. Take everything in here, throw it in the car. Furs, pocketbooks, all that shit. All right, cool. I take shorty. She, hey, come on, let's go. Hey, whatever the fuck. My man, back the car. We empty the whole fucking coat check out. We out. Of course, wind up getting caught up <laughs> because it's board and brick, and the town is this little. You know, what I'm saying once the word was out, it wasn't hard to find the motherfuckers that did this. You know, what I'm saying it was like. Like the town I'm in is smaller than fucking Staten Island. Oh, so you know, black saying? guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Weren't there so, two black guys in here earlier? Where are they now? <laughs> All right, there we go. That was and, us. And it was Brooklyn niggas too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, they had an accent. They didn't talk like we did. All right, no problem. So literally, I, I mean, it, we we drive in the middle of town, and out of nowhere, at a red light, cop cars everywhere to send the other. I'm a, on the run. I'm trying to jump. I'm trying to open the door. I forget my man's door is broken. So I'm rolling out the window and trying to get out the window. Mm. They get to the car just in time to help me out the window. (laughs) (laughs) Word up. Just in time to help me out the window. Throw me in some cuffs. Throw my man in some cuffs. They, you know, we caught. Now, when my record pops up, I'm one of the New York, this, that, and the other. They hit me with the sweetheart. You know, listen. If we get back everything... And you don't fight extradition, we'll drop these charges. We just want to get you out of here. Hmm. Let's do that. You know what I'm saying? What I'm gonna do? Let's do that. All right. So um, so now I'm in the county. They got nine, New York has 90 days to come get me. This foul, foul niggas, boy. They got 90 days to come get me. Now when you're in the county, there's 
you're in the county. Like, there's no exercise. You're not going outside. There's no shaving. There's no haircuts. Did 90 days in the county, and these motherfuckers let me walk. My mom came to get me. My man Paris came to get me. But on the 90th day, they had to let me go. 90th day, I'm walking out the fucking jailhouse, down the steps. As I'm walking down the steps, two white men walk up. Are you in dress Titus? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking like... <laughs> Hair crazy. crazy. Uh-huh. I'm like, no. They're like, yes, you are. Come on. Literally, <laughs> walk me back into the up, motherfucker. Yo. Word up. Walk me back into this shit. I'm like, you gotta be. Like, I had 10 seconds of word. No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Niggas walk me back in on the 90th day. Walk me back in. Cuff me up. The next day, I'm on a plane. You know, on the plane, I'm on the plane in shackles. I'll never forget the little white boy sitting across from me because he couldn't take his eyes off me. And I'm like, it scared the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, I look mad to shove. I'm looking mad crazy. You know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, I've been in the county for 90 days, so I got mad. Like, you know, my mom's is in this town. All my niggas. I got two huge bags of clothes, toiletries, this, any other, going to Rikers Island. They put me on a plane in shackles, take me off the plane, LaGuardia. I get in a green Audi. They put me in a green Audi, throw me to Rikers Island. I get the right because I got crazy bags, this, that, and the other. And they told you couldn't keep it. Nah, nah, that, that actually played to my advantage because it looked like almost like I was coming down from, from upstate up top. or something. Yeah, so yeah. so okay, that kind of yeah. softened my walk a little bit where Cats was like, oh, he's seasoned. But I wasn't. You right. know what I'm saying? I was a young boy on Rikers for the first time for real. So, you know, I'm coming through and um, you know, like I'm in New Jack Quad and life is crazy, man. Life is crazy, but watch how you treat people. I'm in New Jack Quad. Now, when I was hustling, one day this cat runs up on me while I'm hustling, and he's kind of spastic with it, like, yo, my man just had to yell, like, I got to get to the hospital, man. This is my work. My girl about to have my baby. This man, I ain't got no paper on me. I got to get to the hospital. And he's kind of crackish with it, mm. but something, I looked at him, something about him was like, he's just like me. Mm. And I'm hustling at the time. So I go in my pocket, I pull out a mint, like, yo, here. Yeah. I give him $20. He's like, yo, give me a hug. He's like, no one else would even fucking talk to me. Hops in the cab. He's thanking me as he's getting in the cab. And I believed him. Like, he was like, you know, all right, whatever. It was nothing. You know what I'm saying? Going about my business. Now I'm in New Jack Quad. I got all this stuff to send the other. I'm just like, just taking it all in. Now they got the north and south side. You know what I'm saying? You said the full building? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I'm just, you know, it's my first time. I'm taking it in. And uh, yeah, 74, 74. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So on the south side, I'm on the south side, on the north side, I see somebody across staring at me. And I'm like, oh shit, it's about to be on. I already see it's about to be on. Some bullshit. Nigga gets into the in, in between the um the north and south side and he comes up to the, the, the partition, the glass, he starts banging on it, bam, 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 bam. And I'm like looking around and he's pointing, you. I'm like, oh shit. He, you! And, and like he's all aggressive with this shit. And I'm like, you know, I'm just real regular with it. All right, well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know what this nigga want. But whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's Rikers Island. I'm already seeing how it's playing out. You know what I'm saying? I'm already in my head like, okay, well, you know, the first one I walks up, that's that's what I'm dealing with. You know, it is what it is. Um, This nigga, eventually they open our side. This nigga comes running in our side, runs up to me, and I'm damn near ready to swing on that nigga. He's like, you don't remember me? You don't remember me? Nigga, you gave me $20. I needed to get to the hospital to see my girl. Any of y'all niggas front on this nigga, I'll murder you. I'll murder anybody in this motherfucker front on him. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Thank yeah, God. Yeah, that's painted forward <laughs> right there. Thank God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I didn't have a bell, so, you know, because I jumped bell, so I didn't have a bell, so I wound up being in New Jack Quad way too long, which was to my advantage. You know what I'm saying? Wound up being on the house game. I couldn't be on the house game, but they wound up damn near making me house game because I was there so long. You know what I'm saying? Like I just had a, a fu- I had a funny, I guess, rating or something, whatever the fuck. They wasn't quick to, to, to send me anywhere. Yeah, you wasn't classified. Right, right, because yeah. I had to jump out. You yeah. for the answers. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't right. classified. Was you know what I'm saying? House gang is like the, the porters in the house, right. the people that clean up right. okay. around the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, so, so I was there for, for quite a while. So my first, probably my first couple of months was right there in New Jack Quad, which played to my advantage because I'm learning how to jail without being amongst the craziness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's real. I'm not, I don't, I don't know this is the soft version of what exists here, mm. but it's real enough. You know what I'm saying? But, but I'm learning enough. I'm seeing cats I know. I'm seeing cats I know that I thought was real that's 
getting played all the way out. I'm like, nigga, I thought you was... I had to start learning about my walk, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, okay, I'm not dumb. I'm me. Let me do my... You know, so I had to go through a few things. And you become a whole different person in prison. Like, like, like it's... That's a fact. It, 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 it's sad. Right. It's sad who you have to become. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not even some shit about, I'm going to do... I'm not going to bother you. Don't bother me. That shit don't exist. No. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you think you know? Like I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna bother nobody, nobody, nigga. Uh-uh. That don't exist. You have to damn near take a volatile stance. Whereas, all right, there's food and there's eaters of food. Those are your two choices. Yep. The you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's food and there's eaters of food. And you know, like shit, it wasn't hard to, to decide quickly. Where I stood, I'm like, okay, cool. Well, this little nigga is about to eat. You know what I'm saying? So I started becoming somebody that was that wasn't the person I walked in. How much of that were you able to leave behind when it was time to go? How much of that came with you? Um, I brought a lot of it in with me, and I had to get in touch with it, and just as just as quickly as I could, I put that shit down because I didn't like who I became. Mm. I didn't like who I saw, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like what we have to deal with. Mm. Like, like, like that shit was heartbreaking. That yeah. shit was heartbreaking. And, and the saddest part was that I knew I didn't have a choice. Let me tell you a quick story, a quick jail story that shit broke my heart, man. Where that shit broke my heart. I told you how I was going for a long time down south, just that and the other. So, <laughs> crazy story. So I wanted to get transferred to the women's house. You know what I'm saying? Just, just back when shit was just mad populated, fucking overpopulated. So they started housing men in the women's house. You get certain houses, oh, sure. certain wings had, 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 you know, it was all men. So, um, so I, I get sent to the women's house. And the day, I, like I said, I got mad clothes and shit like that. I'm going, when I, when I do go to court, I'm getting dressed, the whole shit. Like Cass is definitely like, oh, shorty, a little different with this shit. All right, cool. So the day I go to the women's house is me and two other cats. And um, you know, I had clothes and shit, so I, I put on this uh this guest denim jacket and I zip it all the way up and I go in the day room. Knowing, you know, I don't been through New Jack quite, I know what you know what happens. You know, I know how cats moved. And two cats I came in with, cats woke up to them one by one and offered them a walk into the bathroom in the day room. First cat goes in, I'm here, boop, 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 boop. he comes out holding this shit. I'm like, oh shit. Mm. They walk up to the second cat. He goes in, hearing him, boom, 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 boom. he comes out holding this shit. I'm like, yo, I zip my shit up further. I'm like, the first nigga walks up to me to ask me, slugging him right in his mouth. Mm-hmm. Not going in no fucking bathroom. The first nigga say anything to me, going in his fucking mouth. No one comes up to me. Cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. All right, cool. Now, the cat um, whose house it was, um, Barkim. Barkim from Left Rack. It was his house, you know what I'm saying? Um, but Kim comes up to me and he's like, you know, something about you, you I actually this and the other, y'all. Now, now mind you, if I'm 18, 19, 20, I look probably 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Like I was a little nigga, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just wasn't scared, you know what I'm saying? But I had a walk about me, but I was a little nigga. So, you know, he's like, yo, sure, you know, you all right, you all right, this and the other, this and the other. But I'm, you know, I'm reserved and I'm just looking at him like, I don't know what's about to happen, mm-hmm. but I peep everybody respecting him. He's walking around with little farmer bibs and she got little jewels on or something. It's obvious what it is. Okay, cool. So I'm thinking I'm getting a pass. Niggas come in that night. New Jack niggas come in. He's looking at niggas. He walks up to me. He's like, you want to be all right in here? Like, yeah. He's like, you see dude right there with the valleys? Get those. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. Mm. Here we go. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Looking at the nigga Bally's, looking at the nigga tall nigga. I'm like, okay. I, it is what it is. I'd rather go up against this nigga than, than go up against this nigga's power. Fuck it, I'm gonna go, go back short. Boy, well, not nigga ain't short, but I'm gonna go back this nigga. Fuck it. So in my head, I'm like, okay, just walk up order the nigga in Jap and just punch him straight in his mouth and tell him to take the shit off. So that's what I do. I walk up to the dude, and this is my word. I'm not saying nothing to him, I'm barely looking at him. And as I literally go back to punch this nigga in the face, this nigga be like, yo, what up, Tiki? And the punch was already coming. Oh, I shit. I punched this nigga right in his fucking mouth. 
What up, T? Bow! And I couldn't stop because I already hit him. Just tell him, take it off, take it off, take him off. Hooking off on this nigga. He can't even believe what's going on, but I'm hooking off on this nigga. Make him take off his fucking shit. Keep them shits to bark him. You know what I'm saying? And um, that shit broke my heart. Because mm. this was somebody I grew up with that I just didn't remember. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I played that shit over a thousand times in my head over the years. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. Like, like, like if I knew that was my dude, what was I supposed to do? Like, I was a young boy in jail. I, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, do I tell this nigga nah? Do I? You tell him, like, yo, we got to fuck this nigga. You know what I'm right saying? Right here and take control of the house. Yeah, like, you know, like, you know, but like, you're not thinking like that. At all. Like, like I'm a new, like I'm a young boy in jail. Right. You know what I'm saying? So niggas are saying, you know, I'm with the shit, but at the end of the day, I feel like shit. Mm. Right. I'm like, oh They're shit. They gonna go back to the hood with that. Yo, man. So all right, so I bagged this kid. So Bar Kim takes a liking to me. So the nigga that was under him now hates me. I don't know the politics of shit. I'm new. Mm-hmm. But there was a nigga that had that, that was up under him. But Balkan likes me now, cause you know, sure you got some about you. That yellow, come yeah. here. Yeah. This nigga hates me now, and I could see it. Like yo, this nigga's oh, this is gonna be a problem. So for like maybe a week, I might. I wind up talking to this kid. I'm embarrassed about the whole shit. Like damn, you know what I'm saying? I don't really remember him, but I remember him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was young, but he remembered. Like this nigga said, yo, what up, Tiki? Bow. That shit fucked me up. Called you the old man. Yo, word. Like he knew me from the blocks. And you know what I'm saying? So that kind of fucked me up. After being there a week and just kind of peeping politics, I'm like, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. This shit is really fucking crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I had court coming up. Um, my cell opens like the morning of court. And when it opens, the nigga I told you that was under this nigga, big nigga too, big bald head nigga, like too big to be a nigga's son, but a nigga's son. But you know what I'm saying? He's standing in front of my fucking cell when it, when it, when it should open. I'm like, yo, as soon as I was like, yo, this nigga come across my face, pow. And, and when he came across my face, the razor came out of his hand and I heard it hit the floor. Mm. Mm. The only thing I could think was that I was cut. Thank God I'm a greasy motherfucker. The shit just mm-hmm. went across my face and didn't cut me. Mm. But I thought I was cut. So everything that's right by the door, grease, everything. I'm like, like I'm trying to hit this nigga with everything I can put my hands on because I'm thinking I'm cut. I jump on this nigga. I'm trying to pound him in, in the hallway. He was just busting me out of the cell to get ready for court, whatever the fuck. I'm trying to kill this nigga because I'm thinking I'm cut. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pound this nigga. Straight up. Pound this nigga. And... Straight up, just uh, the whole time I'm just, and this is my word. I'm one of the cats like, yo, I swore to myself, like, if, if I get cut, I'm just going to be on some bullshit. Like, mm-hmm. I already seen enough niggas keloid up. I'm like, yo, if this shit happened to me, I'm going to be horrible. And that's what I'm thinking as I'm trying to kill it. Like, I'm looking for the razor. Like, I want to kill this nigga. When I got back in the cell, I saw my, I wasn't cut. And I was like, yo, I can't be here, man. I got I to gotta figure this shit out. The last thing that I remember that keeps me or that kept me on, on straight and narrow was going into New Year's. And I'm in a cell and I'm looking outside and it's snowing. And I and I never forget this. I, and, I, and I remind myself of this anytime I'm about to do some stupid shit. I remember saying to myself and meaning with all my heart, I'd rather be butt naked in Times Square right now Facts. to be here. Mm. That's a fun. Right up. And I never forgot that feeling. I never forgot that. Like, yo, I'd rather be butt naked in Times Square than be here. Or, and anytime I was about to do some ridiculous shit, I always just thought of that. And I was like, nigga, are you sure? <laughs> like, yeah, like, you ready to take I, it I, thought, I, you know, I, I, I took a couple of calculated risks, but they were very calculated. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't blind willy nilly nothing. Nah, I'm, that's, that's not who I'm going to be. It's funny because the industry will bring you, there's a lot of times and places where people try your hand yeah. business wise yeah. and if you're not savvy to the business you'll take it personal yeah you'll think they're actually doing Trying, it yeah not just because it's how they do business but but the value you. you yeah you right, specifically right, i'm doing right, this to you right. you a sucker you this you that i'm right. gonna get you because i can right. 
Right, right. And, right. And, 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 you know, and from there, yeah, yeah, you know, like you definitely have to establish some leather skin in this industry without question. Mm-hmm. Because you got to be able to, you know, you got to be able to, like, you know, definitely I give hold of that. You got to brush that. Because it's not, it's not what somebody is going to do. It's what you're going to do as a result of what they do. That's what you feel. Right. How you know what I'm saying? That? Like, so, I, I never look at what a nigga do. I'm looking at what I'm going to do as a result of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I got to remove myself from. If I think you capable of putting me in a position where my shit's going to get fucked up, yeah, I, I got to move away. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't care about what you're doing. I care about what I'm going to do as a result of what you're doing. How much, how much business did that cost you, though? So many, so many opportunities come wrapped in situations like that. Um, where the potential can go, it, there's a potential for it to go that that left, yeah, that bad, that quick. Yeah, I mean, um, I think there was something about me that though, real quick, I did ten months on Rikers. From there, I got probated to a halfway house for another ten months in the Bronx. From there, I got into school, Queensboro Community College. I Got a job working as an office manager for a federal agency working with the homeless at Lenox Hill Neighborhood Association on 72nd and 3rd. Mm-hmm. And I got my own apartment, 2335 Valentine Avenue, my first apartment in mm-hmm. the Bronx. Now, that's why everybody thought you were from the Bronx. Exactly. That's where that came from. That, okay. that, that was my first apartment. That's the first place that I could afford 20, by myself. 22, 2335. No, I'm, your age. Like oh, 22, um, 23. Um, 20, 22. 22. That's why everybody thought you were from the Bronx. Yeah. Okay. So, so right. So, so one day I'm um, coming from lunch while I'm still in the program. No, no, no. I just got my apartment. Sorry. I just got my, I just got my apartment. I hadn't lived in it for a week. I'm coming back from lunch, walking back to my office, Manhattan. And who I walk by? Shorty Doo Wop. Manhattan ah, Street. Shit. Manhattan Street. Passed by Shorty Doo Wop. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like Rikers, everything done took place halfway up. Passed by Shorty Do Up walking down Manhattan Street, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just bugging, hugging, oh, what up? You know what I'm saying? So we talking. Turns out that he's in Brooklyn living with his aunt, her man, and their kid in a studio apartment. You gotta mm. get the fuck up out of there. Right. <laughs> but he's but he's came up every summer and hung out with Red. Still got that, you know. Tie. Saying he's yeah, telling me like, "Yo, I be around these cats and this cats and the other." He's like, "But my living shit is kind of fucked up." This and the other. I'm like, "Yo, I just got my own apartment. Give me one week to live in it to get situated. You come crash with me." Mm. The next week he comes up to the Bronx. When he comes in, he's got turntables and records. I'm like, "Yo, you still doing this shit? Oh, that's cool, <laughs> man." You know what I'm saying? Like, whoa, shit, that's what's up. You still doing this shit? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I hadn't touched vinyl in a little minute. You know what I'm saying? So he sets up his equipment and he puts like maybe five records in this pile, maybe three records in this pile, maybe six records in this pile, maybe four records in this pile, then all the rest is over here. And I'm like, you know, like, so what's, what's that? So he picks up maybe the three records. He's like, yo, I, he's like, we ain't, got, we ain't got no equipment. He's like, yo, I hear this beat <laughs> with, you know, with this bass line, you know, you know. With these horns, and I'm like, oh shit, that sounds hot. You he's know, I'm producing on the floor. Oh no, 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 he's no. He's, your, he's no, playing. He's, a, he's playing a record. He's playing the beat. He's playing the beat. I hear this beat. He play the beat. And then with the, the take it off. Here, and then he like, and I hear this bass line on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's and producing. take it off. And then you know, but he's producing his head. That on the floor is what we. Oh that, yeah, that's no, another. My fault. My fault. Um, my yeah, fault. no, no, no. Okay, but just say yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like. But it's all in his head. We have no equipment. So he's putting these songs together in his head, and the shits are hot. I'm hearing them. Through, you know, in, in our heads. And I'm like, oh shit, like, you know, this is cool. Now, I'm in a position where I can start taking him to hang out where I came from, or I can start hanging out where he's at right now. And I'm like, I don't wanna take you where I'm coming from. Let's go, you know, he's like, yo, come to Calliope. Come, come, you know, that's the first time in Calliope, I'm meeting Tribe while they working on their first album. I'm meeting De La Soul. I'm meeting the Jungle Brothers. Now, when I walk in the room, I know who these niggas are. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like. And what year was this? This is um, 80, 89. Okay. So, this is like 88, 89. And so, like, Tribe wasn't out yet. So, I ain't no tipping on what. 
But I know who Dayla was and I know who Jungle was. And both of them were fucking incredible artists to me. Mm -hmm. I'm there, like Long's helping Tip with his first album. He's giving them beats and stuff like that. Like I'm literally there watching shit take place over the months. As the, as the months go by, we're all becoming friends. I got, I'm coming from more of a hustling background and still kind of got enough, uh, I think, fortitude where I'm not asking none of these niggas for none. I dress then how I dress now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like they were my, more Kenta cloth or more uh, khakis, you know, like, like tr Jungle like was very, urban poet jung thing. Jungle was very camouflaged, mm -hmm. Dayla was more hippie-ish, hippie but free flowing, but uh, Tribe was more Kenta cloth, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, Afrocentric. Afrocentric. I was like this, you know what I'm saying, so, <laughs> so they knew what it was, they respected it, but they, we all got along swimmingly, I think, because I didn't want nothing from them. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, you know, like I, I literally could just be their friend. I'm Long's friend, who they love. You know, what I'm saying Red loves. You know, like and now I'm meeting Red. Red's got me hanging out with him, drinking Myers and going to the castle. And you know, what I'm saying I was already a Bentley's kind of cat. Now I'm hanging in the the dirtiest spots, but the most beautiful <laughs> spots at the same time with Red Alert. So my life is like, oh shit, this shit is incredible. So this is before we even make a demo. But this is you being introduced to native tongues. Right, right. Via Red Alert, who had established that contact with Mr. Long right. over all these years. Right, right. Yo, we gonna take a five minute break and get back, and when we come back, we going full get force right into these. Sounds good. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Smack. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Uh -huh. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.